Gun 9 on your side, live at 10, starts right now. Help support our teachers. We are just hours away from a start of a statewide teacher walkout. Schools in southern Arizona are closed as teachers head to the Capitol. And today, educators line the streets in Tucson and Phoenix to show their support for that movement. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome. I'm Pat Paris. And I'm Stella Inger. Teachers saying today they need community support for this walkout to actually matter. Organizers say they've been waiting for change for a decade, and now they have to take action. They're the parents say, you know, at least this one told us, he supported the Red for Ed movement at first. I support raises for the teachers and money for the schools. Um, where they lost me was the walkout. Another parent says he doesn't like the timing of this walkout because it comes as students have just a month left in school. The Arizona Senate president had this to say about the walkout. While the schools close, the legislature remains, legislature remains open with leaders attempting to complete their task to bring the teachers significantly better pay. We hear their frustration. Our hope is that the teachers who choose to walk out on their children will return to their classroom so that students can learn and complete their school year. A show of solidarity for educators as Red for Ed supporters line Broadway today, a day ahead of the walkout. Nine on your side's Max Darrow shares what some educators hope this will accomplish. From the honking, you'd think you were on Broadway in New York City. But nope, this is Broadway in Harrison in Tucson. Oh, Lined with teachers like John Muritz, bus drivers like Cindy Graybill, and other support staff and community members, all with a message for state lawmakers. Our schools are, are they already are, at a critical stage. They've got to do something about it. We're the supporting staff for the teachers. We need to be recognized too. What would you like to see be done? I'd like to see 20% across the board. Governor Ducey's 20 by 2020 plan would increase teacher salaries by 20% by the year 2020. These people say that won't fix the problem. So the big picture here, it's not just about teacher salaries. All of these people here at this intersection and down Broadway are fighting for more funding for the entire education system. On Thursday, teachers will walk out. More than a dozen districts across southern Arizona will have to close their schools. While this is unfortunate, Moritz says it's the only way their message will be heard loud and clear. When will they listen? Will they listen if suddenly we said, yeah, over the summer, oh, we're going to walk out. It's going to make, it'll make no statement at all. This is the only way that we can get our message across. I'd like this walkout to accomplish getting back in, educating our children, and being back on the road as a school bus driver. So not all of the educators and teachers I spoke with are headed to Phoenix tomorrow. A lot of them say they do plan on getting up there, uh, but they're excited to stand alongside the other educators across the state. And Max, you have been covering these standouts for weeks now. Was today's any different? You know, the size was a little bit bigger, and what the people said about that, uh, they said that this is kind of a preview for what tomorrow's mm -hmm. events may look like, even though the walkout doesn't start until tomorrow. They said this is just a little bit of what it's going to be like. And so. who knows how long it will go on. Yeah, for. absolutely. Max, thank you. And if you are a parent and you don't know where to bring your child tomorrow, there are some free options. Victory Worship Center near Flowing Wells is taking an 1100 kindergarten through sixth graders for a free day camp. Southside Presbyterian Church and John Valenzuela Youth Center are offering a free day of camp for K through fifth graders. They are each taking in about 50 students. Pima County Library has some activities for students as well. The City of Tucson's KidCo program will be offered all day at certain recreation centers for $5. For a detailed list or how to register for one of these options, just head to our website, kgun9.com. And the Community Food Bank is helping feed hungry kids during the school closures. They'll have non-perishable items available for families at the Flowing Wells, Los Ranchitos, Palo Verde, and Southwest Family Resource Centers. Grijalva Elementary and Wakefield Family Resource Centers will also have food available. We've got a list of where everywhere you can take your little ones to get a hot meal during the closure on kega9.com. With current teachers walking out for better pay, we asked U of A education majors how their future careers look to them now. Education students, we asked, say they support the idea of the strike and say the job action may improve working conditions when they graduate and join the profession. But some say the state of the teaching profession may be leading them to a career change. Yeah, it makes me reconsider what I want to do. It makes me uh, think that 
because I, I still want to help the community when I'm older, but it makes me re um, think what career I want to do. Maybe like go in the medical field instead of being uh, an education major. But most of the education majors say they are still committed to teaching even with the challenges they know they will be facing. And join us tomorrow on Good Morning Tucson as we watch local teachers leave for the Capitol all day. Kega 9's Kevin Bouton will be in Phoenix following the action, so make sure you stay with us. And follow us online on Facebook, Twitter, and our app for the latest on the teacher walkouts. It's going to be a hot one for those who are at the Capitol yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, it sure is, and that's one thing we got to keep in mind. What's the one thing we say that affects almost everyone almost every day? It's the weather, mm -hmm. and certainly a factor uh, for everybody who's going to be outside tomorrow. Keep in mind, we're going to have similar temperatures tomorrow to what we had today. We went to 95 degrees in Tucson this afternoon. We started out 58 degrees and it warmed up rapidly. So even if you're out there on those sidewalks in the morning, boy, be sure to stay hydrated, wear that sunscreen. A uh, nice hat will do you some good too. Take care of yourself out there. 85 and 55 are the averages on this state. 99 and 34 are the records. High temperatures around the rest of the region. Look at that. We did uh, hit the century mark this afternoon and heal a bend. We're going to see similar temperatures tomorrow, but then here comes some thunderstorms back in the forecast. We'll tell you when. Tyler, thank you. Reports of inappropriate content on a kid's video app. What YouTube is doing to help parents fine tune what their kids are seeing when they aren't around. Plus, family members waiting decades for answers and their loved ones' deaths. How they're feeling tonight after police say they caught the man responsible. You're watching KGA 9 on your side. One more people are now sick with E. coli from an outbreak that started in Yuma. The Centers for Disease Control says the outbreak has spread to three more states, Georgia, South Dakota, and Colorado. That increases the total number of reported illnesses from infected romaine to 84. A new study by JAMA Pediatrics shows more kids have high blood pressure. New guidelines were released last year that redefined unhealthy blood pressure numbers. Under those new guidelines, almost 6% of American kids have high blood pressure now. Many kids also had their conditions severity upgraded as a result of those guideline changes. And YouTube now giving parents more control over what their kids can see on the app. Now they're allowing parents to limit the content their kids can watch to approve channels, keeping other content completely out. This comes after months of reports that content which looked child friendly actually contained violence or sexual situations. YouTube is launching another tool later this year that will let parents choose every video or channel their children can see in the app. Hmm. Good idea, I think. Mm -hmm. Instead of YouTube, I think we'll all be checking the skies a little later on this week. Kyler, you say there might be a chance of a little thunderstorm? Yeah, I'm excited to do that. And uh, today we were looking at the skies. We saw an abundance of sunshine that gave us an abundance of above average temperatures. But we're about to change that in the seven day. You'll see how. Tyler, thank you. And up next, California investigators say they caught a serial killer who has been dormant for nearly 40 years. How they found the man they say is the Golden State Killer. You're watching KGA 9 on your side. serial killer on the run for decades may now be behind bars. Yeah, Sacramento police say they caught the Golden State Killer you see here. A book delving into the 40-year-old case was published just less than two months ago. And now we are learning how police tracked down a man they say hasn't killed since the 1980s with Johnson Reports. Tonight, hiding in plain sight. Police say one of the most elusive serial killers in American history has been captured outside his suburban home. We found the needle in the haystack, and it was right here in Sacramento. Law enforcement now identifying 72-year-old Joseph James D'Angelo as the Golden State Killer. The once married former police officer now under arrest for a violent crime spree that terrorized California for more than 40 years. He was committing the crimes during the time he was employed as a peace officer and obviously we'll be looking into whether it was actually on the job. Detectives working the case for decades, but D'Angelo not a suspect until days ago when they got a break. They say cutting edge DNA testing allowed them to make a match. We were able to get some discarded DNA and we were able to confirm what we thought we already knew, that we had our man. 
at least 12 murders, 45 rapes, and more than 100 burglaries spread fear across the state in the 1970s and 80s. His voice allegedly heard in this chilling phone call taunting one of his victims. Those crimes meticulously planned, the suspect wearing a ski mask would break into homes, gag, blindfold, and tie up his female prey before carrying out his brutal attacks. Today, police could be seen searching D'Angelo's home in this quiet Sacramento neighborhood. His neighbors stunned. He was just an odd guy, kind of kept to himself, but had a temper. For the victim's families, overwhelming relief. It is time for all victims to grieve and to take measure one last time. 18-year-old Janelle Cruz, the last known victim, was murdered in 1986. Soon after, her sister Michelle fled California, fearing for her own safety. The feeling is indescribable. I am so happy. I feel so blessed. We finally got the guy who brutally raped and murdered my sister. And this is just the beginning. That key piece of DNA evidence came to light only six days ago. Prosecutors say that DNA and the methods he used links dozens of cases up and down the state. They're promising more charges in the coming days. Whit Johnson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And a Florida Sheriff's Department is standing by a school resource officer who was caught on camera slamming a female student to the ground. This is body cam video of that incident. The SRO says he asked the student to leave the room repeatedly. She refused. That student who remains unidentified was sent to the hospital to be treated for her injuries. Her parents are refusing to comment. Now, Cake on 9 on your side. First warning weather brought to you by Casino del Sol, the soul of Tucson. Well, as we take a look at the current conditions coming to us from the Tucson International Airport, we have another warm night going, 77 degrees, just a few high clouds and still pretty dry, 24 degrees on the dew point, 14% humidity, wind not much of a factor this evening, and we don't expect it to be through the night. 65 degrees in Sierra Vista, 76 in Safford, still almost 90 degrees in Phoenix in the last hour. We'll see some of those high clouds hanging around tonight and right on through the day tomorrow, but it's not going to cut the heat down all that much still climbing into the 90s tomorrow afternoon in Tucson and tonight uh, it's cooling off nicely there in Flagstaff and the Grand Canyon down into the 40s but the rest of us still in the 70s and 80s across the nation we had that cool pocket of air drifting to the south and uh, tomorrow it's going to kind of erode just a little bit we'll see a lot of 60s and 70s returning to the map a little bit cooler there in Denver tomorrow afternoon but uh, Boise near 80 degrees and uh, taking a look at the national radar and satellite picture. One storm moves out over New England. Here comes another one through the Midwest and the uh, South tonight. We could see some pretty strong thunderstorms marching through Louisiana and uh, Mississippi, eventually into Alabama as we head on into the early morning hours. But for us, a few high clouds will continue to drift across our skies. But other than that, the bigger changes are coming by the end of the week. Let's take a look at this. It's been a long dry spell around here. April so far, we haven't received any rain at all at the airport. And uh, the last measurable rain we got was March 18th. And the last significant rainfall we got, remember this one right around Valentine's Day, that three day stretch there where we picked up 1.7 inches. Well, hopefully we can change that this weekend. Now, not everybody's going to get any rain, but uh, we got to get that moisture to increase the turquoise there. That is the moisture increasing and we're seeing just a little bit of an indication of that. It's still pretty dry here though with dew points in the teens and 20s. But as we transition towards the end of the week, you can see some of those dew points start to come back into the 30s and 40s and will introduce more moisture into the eastern part of the state. And that's where it'll be more favorable for those scattered showers and thunderstorms. And the biggest concern we've got though, as we many times do at this time of the year, these first thunderstorms don't produce a lot of rain, but they do produce some gusty winds and some dry lightning, which is not good for the wildfire danger. So we'll be watching that one overnight tonight. We'll be watching temperatures only dropping into the 50s and 60s for most of the lower elevations around the metro area, lower 60s, upper 40s in Summerhaven, and then for tomorrow, pretty much the same temperature trend as what we have seen over the last few days, mid 90s showing up west of Tucson, low to mid 90s in the metro area. Your seven day forecast takes the 90s right on 
into the weekend with that slight chance of showers and thunderstorms, even for Tucson Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. And then a couple of uh, cool fronts come through here and cool us back into the 80s as we start next week. It is time to head back to the desk. Tyler, thank you. Jason Barr here. Now Roadrunners not disappointing their home crowd tonight. Yeah. First home playoff game in franchise history and they white out at San Jose. We've got post game reaction just in from the Tucson Arena. Plus LeBron James with not one but two amazing plays in the final seconds. If you're watching Tega 9. Stay with us. Now Kega 9 on your side sports with sports director Jason Barr. We knew there would be a whiteout. We also got a shutout. The Roadrunners first ever home playoff game against San Jose game three of their American Hockey League series at the Tucson Arena first period. The Roadrunners Dylan Strom steals the puck in front of Michael Bunting and just like that it's a one nothing Tucson lead later in the first. It's Strom again to Carter Camper to Lawson Krause and the Roadrunners go up to zip. Still in the first period. Up ahead, here comes Lane Peterson flying through the ice. Skates in, shoots, and scores. One of six different goal scorers for Tucson. They're loving it at the TCC. Goalie Aiden Hill needed to make just 15 saves. Road orders win 6-0. San Jose is trying to take out their frustrations with this fight at the end, but Tucson has a two games to one series lead. Our compete level was there throughout the full 60 minutes, and that's what you want to see. And uh, when you get off the start that we got off to, um, obviously it enables you to play with a little bit more confidence. It's a lot easier when, when you're playing with the puck the whole time. Everyone gets confidence. Uh, you know, everyone you know was feeling it and feeling good, and uh, the bench is positive, and you know it's just uh, we kind of kept rolling from there. All right, game four Friday night. Ten, by the way, 10th ranked Arizona softball defeating New Mexico tonight 3-1. to one. Alyssa Denham struck out a career-high 10 batters. This after she beat ASU over the weekend. However, center fielder Ashley Hughes is out indefinitely with a broken hand suffered on Sunday. It is the eve of the NFL draft. The Cardinals pick 15th. The Cleveland Browns select first and fourth tomorrow night in Dallas. NBA playoffs, the Cavaliers and Pacers in Cleveland. Tied at two games each. Tie score, final seconds. Indiana's Victor Oladipo goes to the hoop, but is blocked by LeBron James. Take another look. Then with the clock winding down, James three pointer for the win. You bet. Cavs take it 98 95. Cleveland has a 3 2 series lead. The Diamondbacks sat the Phillies tonight. Check out Philadelphia's Carlos Santana who refuses to share his leather conditioner with teammate Cesar Hernandez. You got to do better than that. He says you only get one squirt. That's all you get. Gosh. All right, Diamondbacks up 3-2 in the sixth inning. Two on for Aaron Altair. Three-run home run off Zach Greinke. Phillies win 5-3. Uh, the two teams will play a matinee game, matinee game tomorrow in the rubber game of their three-game series. That's it for now. Hey, glad you're with us. I'm Jason Barr, and you're watching K-Gun 9 at 10 o'clock. Stay with us. The Southern Arizona Law Enforcement Foundation has donated 14 bikes to help two-wheeled patrols here in Tucson. Yeah, 10 of these are regular bikes. Before are e-bikes. Those help police conserve energy by electronically assisting with pedaling. The total cost of all the new wheels, more than $30,000. Southern Arizona Law Enforcement Foundation supports Marana, U of A, and Tucson Police. And today was a high-speed kickoff to the weeks of activities for kids at Sunnyside Unified School District. Uh, Olympic BMX biker Justin Posey stopped by Loughner Middle School to get the kids excited about the cycling STEM program. Students at Loughner and at Craycroft Elementary will be using cycling and tracking modeling to break into the world of science, technology, engineering, and math over the next few weeks. Did you see that? Guy you, yeah, I, that's what I was, I was trying to understand Man. what was going on there. I mean, he's an Olympic BMX rider. Yeah, right. That's so, trusting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that is. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a good night. Join Good Morning Tucson beginning at 4.30 a.m.